All right, welcome back to our unit on nomenclature. All right, today's topic is naming acids and hydrocarbons. Okay, so lesson three of three, your objectives are as follows. You'll learn the basic definition of an acid. Okay, you will learn the steps or rules for writing the names and formulas for acids. And you will learn what a hydrocarbon is and the steps or rules for naming alkane hydrocarbons. Okay, so for your quick write, What do you know about acids? What are some things you may have learned about acids in the past that you're familiar with? Okay. Consider the two chemicals, CH4 and C2H6. How are these two chemicals similar? How are they different? All right. And what observations can you make about the following acids? Okay. So consider things like charge. Okay. And which elements come first or second here? Okay. Go ahead and pause this while you do your quick write. I'm going to move on. Okay, so acids. Acids are compounds that produce hydrogen ions when dissolved in water. Okay, so if something is acidic, okay, if it's a liquid, it has all these hydrogen ions floating around. Okay, hydrogen ions are very reactive and they readily bond with other substances. Okay, so these compounds are called acids and were first recognized by their sour taste of their solution. For example, citric acid, okay, is responsible for the sour taste of lemons and limes. If you've ever had sour candy, all right, it has a lot of hydrogen ions in it, which makes it sour, okay? And acids have a pH of less than 7, all right? So, for example, okay, one of the, one of the acids we're going to be working with a lot this year is HCl, hydrochloric acid. Well, how do we make that acid? Well, when hydrochloride, it's a gas, comes in contact with water, it dissolves and produces these hydrogen ions, thus forming hydrochloric acid, okay? So a substance that produces hydrogen ions in water. So that's our definition. When writing the chemical formulas for an acid, hydrogen is always written first, okay? So, just like ionic compounds, though, acids must be neutral and possess a charge of zero. So, for example here, consider hydrochloric acid again here, which is made up of the hydrogen cation and the chloride anion, okay? Notice, the plus one cation charge of hydrogen is balanced by the negative charge of chlorine, creating a neutral compound. So, we write charge of plus one, minus one, net charge of zero, we write HCl. Okay, hydrogen written first, anion second. All right, so what are acids? Okay, very important real quick that you know that the hydrogen has a plus one charge on it. Okay, go ahead and write this for your notes. Question on the left-hand side. Okay, everything below the question on the right-hand side of your notes. Okay, go ahead and pause this. I'm going to move on. All right, so the following steps or rules will help you determine how we name acids. Okay, I noticed... I use the word steps and rules interchangeably because they're basically the same thing. Okay, so step one, or rule number one, acids without oxygen, we add the prefix hydro and the suffix ic on the end. Okay, so we begin the acid with hydro and it ends with ic. Okay, so for example here, HCl, notice there's no oxygen here. So we put hydro in the front and ic on the end gives us hydro chloric acid okay hbr hydrobromic acid okay so i think you get the picture here no oxygen we put hydro in the front ick on the end okay number two for acids with oxygen the suffix on the anion is changed from it to us or eight to ick okay so if it has it the anion we change the it to us or the eight to ick, okay? For example here, let's look at the acid formula, H2SO3. That is sulfite. That is the anion or polyatomic anion, sulfite, all right? So how are we going to change that? Well, it becomes us, sulfurous acid, okay? H3PO4, that's phosphite. So, phosphite, okay, if we 
add three hydrogen here to balance that negative three charge, we get, okay, phosphorus acid. Okay, so we're not done yet here. What about, okay, ones that end in eight here, like sulfate. Here's the acid formula. Okay, well, it has the anion sulfate in it. Eight becomes sulfuric acid, all right? And H here, okay, becomes, that's acetate. So that is the anion acetate, which eight becomes ic, and we get acetic acid, acetic acid. That's also vinegar, all right? So if you're ever drinking vinegar, you're drinking acetic acid. All right. So those are the rules or steps that you need to know. So for your notes, what are the steps or rules for naming acids? Okay, write these down. Okay, question on the left-hand side, answer on the right-hand side. Go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm going to move on here. Okay, so go ahead and practice. Write the names for the following acids below. Okay, go ahead and pause this while you work on these. Hit play when you're ready to see the answers. All right, so first one, hydrofluoric. Notice there's no oxygen, so we put a hydro and an ick on the end, we get hydrofluoric acid, okay? Next one, sulfuric acid, eight becomes ick, okay? Sulfate, the anion here is sulfate, so we change the eight to ick and we get sulfuric acid, okay? Here's nitrous acid, okay? Well, we change okay, the nitrite to us, so we get nitrous acid, and the last one here, hydrochloric acid, all right, no oxygen, so we put hydro and ick on the end, all right, now let's work backwards here, let's write the formulas for the following acids below, okay, go ahead and pause this while you practice these problems, hit play when you're ready to see the answers, Okay, so first one, HNO3, nitric acid. Number two, nitrous acid. Number three, HBr, hydrobromic acid. Acetic acid or vinegar, H, okay, C2, H3O2. Phosphoric acid, H3PO4, okay. And phosphorus acid, H3PO3. All right, naming hydrocarbons, the alkanes. An important class of compounds are the hydrocarbons. As the name implies, hydrocarbons consist of only hydrogen and carbon. Okay, there are thousands of different and possible hydrocarbon molecules out there. All right, however, we are only going to look at the simplest type of hydrocarbons called the alkanes. These hydrocarbons are known for their ability to combust and generate energy when ignited. For example, methane is an alkane. It is responsible for the flame in your laboratory Bunsen burners. All right. Alkanes have the formula C subscript N H subscript 2 times N plus 2, where N here, very important, is the number of atoms, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. All right. So, for example, if we use that formula, okay, C subscript N, H subscript 2 times N plus 2, and we plug in a value of N is equal to 1, we get methane here, right? Okay, one carbon atom, and then we plug in 1 here, 2 times 1 plus 2 gives us four hydrogen atoms, okay, giving us methane, CH4. Or if we plug in a value of N is equal to 2, right? Okay, we get two carbon atoms and six hydrogen atoms, okay? Two times two is four, plus two gives us six hydrogen atoms, all right? And finally, if we plug in a value of n is equal to three, we get a formula of, of C3H8, three carbon and eight hydrogen, okay? And that's called propane. So we have methane, okay? Ethane and propane. So notice as n gets larger, so does the formula in the molecule. So, a couple rules. Naming these hydrocarbons are 
pretty simple and follow a few basic rules. Step one, okay, the last part or suffix ends in ane. So we put ane on the end. For example, propane or octane, all right? For n is equal to one through four, the names and formulas simply must be memorized, okay? For example, the names and formulas of methane, ethane, propane, and butane must be memorized, okay? And step three, okay, if n is greater than four, we add the following prefixes, okay? So if n is equal to five, we put pent in front and we get pentane C5H12, okay? It's kind of like our covalent rules. If n is equal to six, add the prefix hex and rewrite C6H14, okay? And if n is equal to seven, that gives us seven carbon, we add hept, okay, for heptane. And finally, if n is equal to eight, we add the prefix oct, which represents eight carbon or octane. All right, octane is what our cars run on. It's gas, essentially, okay? Okay, for your notes, what are the alkane hydrocarbons and how do we name them? Question on the left-hand side, answer here on the right-hand side. Please write these tables, okay? Pause this while you write. I'm gonna move on here. Okay, so practice. Write the names for the following alkane hydrocarbons below. Okay, so pause this while you work on these four problems and hit play when you're ready to see the answers. Okay, number one is methane. It's the fuel for your Bunsen burners. Number two, propane, the fuel for camping stoves and home grills. Three is butane, that's a fuel for a lot of the lighters. And four is octane, it's a fuel for your cars. All right, so now we're gonna work backwards here. Write the formulas for the following alkane hydrocarbons below. Okay, once again, go ahead and pause this while you work on these four. Okay, um, and hit play when you're ready to see the answers. Okay, so methane, CH4, ethane, Okay, C2H6, heptane, C7H16, and hexane, C6H14. All right, hopefully you got those right. Okay, go ahead and summarize. Okay, create your own definition for an acid. When writing the formula for an acid, which element always comes first? How do we write the names for acids that do contain oxygen? And how do we write the names for acids that do not contain oxygen. What are the alkane hydrocarbons and what does N in the formula C subscript N H subscript 2 times N plus 2 represent? If N is equal to 5, how many hydrogen atoms will the alkane hydrocarbon contain? Okay, write the formula. Okay, go ahead and pause this while you do this. Okay, and we'll see you next time.